Mr. Gray with AB 2152, the ballot order initiative. Okay. Mr. Gray. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. Um, AB 2152 authorizes counties to place self-help transportation measures above state measures on the November 2016 general election ballot. The choice to utilize this authority rests with the local county supervisors, and any measure affected by this bill will still require two-thirds vote approval by the voters. Local transportation funds play an important role in existing transportation financing and will be a vital component of any long-term sustainable funding solution going forward. Governor Brown recognized uh, this, in fact, when he issued the proclamation convening the Extraordinary Session on Transportation and called on the legislature to consider and act upon legislation necessary to complement local efforts for repair and improvements of local transportation infrastructure. When used as leverage to pull down federal funding, local matching dollars can significantly expand the state's transportation resources. For example, the Federal Highways Administration will provide $88 for every $11 in local matching funds. The Federal Transit Administration will provide 80% of a project's cost with a 20% local match. And the Federal Aviation Administration will match local funds at a 19 to 1 ratio. California faces a transportation funding shortage of $530 billion over the next nine years. As we consider proposals to dedicate state funds to rebuild our infrastructure, the importance of local government contributions cannot be forgotten. Just as the legislature passed the 2014 Water Bond and Rainy Day Budget Act, at the top of the ballot, in a time of need, AB 2152 provides county supervisors with the same flexibility to prioritize transportation funding uh, at a time when it is of statewide importance. As noted in the analysis, the committee unanimously approved a bill last year, AB 562, which the governor vetoed, saying the current ballot order has existed with minimal changes for decades, and I don't think there is a good reason to change it now. I believe our state's dire need for a transportation finance solution is a good reason for the governor to take a good look at this. This is a bipartisan measure, and I want to point out, members, this is supported by every member of my local delegation, uh, Senator Canella. Senator Galgiani, Assemblywoman Olson, and myself. AB 2152 is supported by the Merced County Association of Governments, Merced and Stanislaus County, and the Stanislaus Pat County Business Alliance. At this time, Madam Chair, I'll take uh, any questions. We have uh, witnesses in support. Witnesses in support, yes. Uh, Madam Chair and members, Sylvia Solis on behalf of the Board of Supervisors for the counties of Merced and Stanislaus. Um, local initiatives have critical implications on our local communities. Unfortunately, studies have shown that um, voters are less likely to vote on some of these down ballot measures. We have an urgent need for an increase in transportation funding in our local communities. We believe it is essential that these types of proposals, given the matching funds that we would receive from the federal government, should receive a higher placement on ballots due to their greater local impacts. For these reasons, we support AB 2152. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, persons in support? Any opposition? Okay. Members, any questions? Yes. Mr. Harper. The question I have, if the concern was that uh, it would potentially be on the crowded ballot of November, why wasn't this placed on the ballot in June? The local plan uh, was always to put this uh, on the November ballot. Um, that was a decision made by uh, the local COG uh, group, not a decision uh, that I participated in. Um, mm -hmm. So I won't speak on their behalf as to why it was. It, it would seem to me that that would, would have been the easiest cost-effective solution because the other question is if you want a question to be asked exclusively on the ballot, then you can place it on the ballot as a special election. Yeah. Is there a reason why that hasn't been chosen? Well, I think uh, all of us, uh, both sitting up there and myself sitting right here, realize that uh, the placement uh, in a special election uh, or on a June ballot uh, in reference to a tax measure in a conservative community is probably not overly advantageous. And there's plenty of history uh, as to why that's not necessarily a good idea. Uh, what I will add is I represent, uh, you know, one of the poorest uh, 
communities in this entire state. We have the highest you know, rates of poverty. Uh, we have unemployment in the double digits. While many of your communities uh, have enjoyed uh, an exit from the recession, uh, my community sits in decades-long systemic high unemployment uh, with all the challenges that come along with that. Uh, those challenges make it equally possible when you go to poor communities and you ask them to reach a little deeper into their pocket, uh, that's a challenge. That's a challenge to get these things uh, passed. This tra local transportation self-help measure has been on our local ballot several times, uh, Mr. Harper, and uh, has come within a few percentage points of the two-thirds threshold. Um, what I'm trying to do here is give those communities an opportunity uh, for what little advantage, and every member of this committee, uh, with the exception of yourself, uh, supported putting uh, the water bond at the top of the ballot. We all know uh, why this has been done in the past. We all uh, have participated in doing that. Um, I think this is uh, an opportunity to give these local communities, you know, who have missed out on millions and millions and millions of dollars. I don't know that there's a single member of this committee who rep represents a community who, who doesn't already have the self-help status. In fact, I suspect there isn't, uh, thinking of the communities that you represent. Uh, and while your communities have drawn down, the, drawn down those federal dollars, uh, my community has not. And at a time when this body debates the importance of investing in uh, transportation infrastructure, I think it's fair to afford uh, these local communities uh, and these local boards of supervisors an opportunity uh, and an extra, an extra tool with which to get these measures in place. Madam Chair, if I could suggest that the issue is that the ballots are too crowded, then we should probably visit the issue of how our current system is forcing so many ballot questions to the November ballot, to, indeed, if the question is that it's overloaded. Uh, I think that's the way to address the issue. I think that if uh, the locals had wanted to have a less credit ballot, they did have that opportunity to be able to put on the June election. Uh, perhaps if the question that this November is too crowded and they want to do it in the future, perhaps they should visit a primary in a future election. So I'll be voting. Okay. Uh, any other question? Yes. Mr. Nazarian. In fact, I, I couldn't agree with my colleague from Orange County more. That's why I hope you join me uh, in future endeavors in asking the federal government to change elections to a weekend, uh, maybe a Saturday and a Sunday, and two-day period of time, uh, and do both uh, ground-level voting available as well as all-mail ballot uh, available so that we uh, ensure that Around, instead of skirting around the issues of trying to make ways of making it easier for people to vote, that everyone has an opportunity to participate. Then local jurisdictions won't have to figure out which turnout will great benefit um, the opportunity of them passing a proposition that will allow their uh, for their capital improvements to take place. So with that, I am very much in support of, of your measure. Um, <clears throat> I, I, but while that, I think, I think it's legitimate also to look at what um, changes there are going to be in the future. How, how at some point, it is going to get confusing having different jurisdictional measures take precedent over others. I don't know what the solution is for that. I w it wouldn't stop me from supporting your measure right now, but I think that's something that going forward we need to figure out uh, how to be able to address that issue because I think this is going to be something that's going to happen more and more as um, local jurisdictions try to uh, um, uh, invest in their own capital improvements. So okay. thank you. Thank Any you. other questions or members? Mr. Lowe. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, um, and very much appreciate the legislative intent also. Um, at the same time, I think there is uh, perhaps could be some concern related to the various counties that might exist. Certainly, you've already addressed and highlighted the specific district-related issues, given your delegation, too. Have you thought about some specifics opportunity as it relates to the legislative intent and the language that might help address specifically the language that might affect the areas that uh, you come from and the delegation that you previously outlined? Sure. Um, thank you for that question. Um, we, we've certainly been open to, and uh, Madam Chair would be uh, willing actually here today to uh, accept uh, amendments uh, 
to the bill to limit it to just Merced and Stanislaus County, the two counties I represent. If, in fact, the committee, you know, has some reservations about the impact of this policy on a statewide uh, nature, we drafted the bill uh, to afford each and every county uh, an opportunity uh, to take advantage of this. But if that's too large a step at this time, uh, as uh, Mr. Nazarian, as Mr. Harper have pointed out, uh, you know, if there are larger kind of long-term implication questions, uh, I certainly think myself and my fellow uh, delegation members, Senator Canales, Senator Galgiani, Assemblywoman Olson, would be happy to say, hey, let's just focus this on our two counties who are not self-help counties. Many of the other counties throughout the state already have that status. And uh, if we want to limit the scope of the bill to the two counties and to this election, uh, I would be more than willing that that would be an acceptable uh, solution and uh, perhaps could address uh, some of the concerns of the committee members. Madam Chairman. Sure. Uh, and because that, that, that was a concern that I also shared mm -hmm. as well, um, hearing a fellow committee members' comments and testimony uh, related to that. So it's encouraging to hear that you'd be uh, open to uh, such an amendment. That's something that I could see myself uh, supporting should uh, the conversation go that, towards that direction. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Comments? Okay. Um, is there a motion for this bill? So moved. It's been moved and second. Um, concerning this particular bill um, that we have before us, uh, not uh, anything else in terms of amendments, uh, I, I appreciate Mr. Gray's advocacy for his, his community and, and understand the challenges that are there. The concern I had for the bill, number one, was that the precedent it was going to set for so many other folks to want their stuff at the top. Um, and as a result of that, as well as the fact that this it bill is only for each, ends in January. So, I mean, we have a whole bill that a lot of conversation that is over in January. Um, so, um, for that reason, I had some difficulty in, in supporting the bill uh, as it currently exists. Um, uh, that would change the order because I can see so many people wanting to change the order in the future for their things to go to the top. Uh, I know in San Diego we've had a number of, of concerns about being at the bottom of the ballot in terms of school board uh, initiatives uh, or uh, bonds for building schools. And But we keep pushing, we push the issue, you know, go all the way down to the ballot, go all the way down the ballot. And we've generally always gotten them passed. Uh, even though it's way down at the end of the ballot, we keep telling people, don't forget there's other things other than just the president on the ballot. And so it's, it, it requires some effort to do that. I'm not sure all of the dynamics that occur in in uh, Merced and, and, and not whether this would actually solve it. I do think there is some some rationale for the order of the ballot. Those who vote regularly know that you start here and, you, and you're looking for something local, you know where to find it. When you start changing things around on the ballot on a, uh, for various reasons, then you may create more confusion than necessary clarity. Uh, for that reason, I, I, I could not support the recommendation, but I understand it, so I have no recommendation uh, to let the members choose the recommendation that they would choose feel most comfortable with, because I think there's some validity in it. But as chair, I didn't want to set the precedent that this would be something that I would be open to as we begin to move forward with other who may want to come forward and make the same recommendation to have their things moved ahead of the ballot, and we have this kind of moving ballot that goes wrong in terms of order. I don't think it's a good precedent to set to allow that to happen. Uh, for that reason, I have no recommendation for this particular bill. It's left up to the individual members. Okay. Well, uh, there's a motion, first and second, roll call. Weber? No. Weber? No. Harper? No. Harper? No. Travis Allen? No. Travis Allen is not voting. Gordon? Lowe? Aye. Lowe? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Mullen, aye. Nazarian? Aye. Nazarian, aye. Okay. Ayes three, noes two. Ayes three, noes two, and one non voting. We need one more vote, uh, and we'll keep the roll open. It's on call. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, members. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have uh, Mr. Mullen's bill. I'm looking for my, my uh, author, and here he's sitting here. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Thank you, Madam Chair and members presenting AB 2686. I would like to open by accepting the technical amendments on page 9 of the analysis, as well as a change of the sunset date at the request of the chair. 
Mm -hmm. AB 2686 creates an opt-in statewide pilot for all mailed ballot elections in the event of a vacancy in the legislature or Congress. A county may be able to, uh, may be eligible opt to opt in to the pilot program if the percentage of permanent vote by mail voters, registered voters in the county is at or above 50%. California consistently faces a combination of low turnout and high cost when special elections are called due to a vacancy in, legis in the legislature or Congress. The cost of a special election can range from half a million dollars to a million or more, and this cost is not usually built into local budgets due to the unexpected nature of special elections. While California struggles uh, with a voter turnout crisis, even in general elections, special elections are even more likely to result in vast underrepresentation due to low turnout. In the last five years of special elections for vacancy in the legislature or Congress, excluding recalls and those consolidated with a statewide election, the average overall turnout was 15.57%. In one instance, turnout was as low as 5.55% for a particular special election. All mail ballot elections have the potential to increase turnout, particularly in minority populations. Preliminary data from a San Mateo County pilot conducted in November of last year showed increases in turnout across multiple demographic groups. AB 2686 provides a number of protections to ensure voter outreach and education occur and is about expanding the opportunities for all mail ballot elections to occur. With me today to testify in support is Michael Vu, the Registrar of Voters of San Diego County, and Dorothy Holsom with CSAC. And with that, I ask for an I vote. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Madam Chair, Vice Chair Harper, and members of the committee. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Vu, a San Diego County Registrar of Voters. I'm here today in support of Assembly Bill 2686, authored by Assembly Member Mullen and Gonzalez. I laud their continuing leadership in the area of providing jurisdictions alternative options in which to administratively conduct elections, specifically their advocacy to allow for primarily mail ballot elections. As a matter of fact, San Diego County has experienced a steep increase in voters wishing to sign up to be a permanent mail ballot voter. The numbers has grown by 400% since 2004, where today over 61% of the 1,448,326 registered voters are permanent mail ballot voters. Your vote today will allow us to balance the reality with the constant special vacancy occur elections occurring in state legislative offices where the majority of all ballots cast in the special vacancy elections are mail ballots. Let me just go run through some numbers for you. Over the past seven years, there's been over 30 special vacancy elections in these state legislative races. 13 alone in 2013. The cost of those 13 elections was $17.5 million approximately. And of, out of that, uh, those 13 special elections, 79% of all ballots cast were mail ballots. Specifically, San Diego County, through the enactment of Assembly Bill 1873, as well as Assembly Bill 547, is able to have a pilot similar to the one being proposed today. Our wish, which is reflected in this bill, would be to widen the opportunities to conduct an elections as provided. I want to t thank the various stakeholders, including Asian American Advancing Justice, Disability Rights California, and the ACLU, who continue to work with us to make this bill inclusive and as well as accessible. I'd be more than happy to ask, answer any of your questions that you may have, and I wish for your support today. Thank you. Any other support? Yes. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members. Dorothy Holzen with the California State Association of Counties. Pleased to be in support today. Um, as was mentioned in this committee earlier this month, um, and as Mr. Vu mentioned, the cost. A single special election held earlier this year cost a single county over $500,000. And that's a cost that is borne by the county alone. There is no recovery mechanism or funding mechanism to help support that, that burden. And I will say that CSAC is pleased to be supporting other mechanisms, longer term solutions to help with voter turnout, accessibility, um, and other issues plaguing some of our um, elections uh, administration. Uh, but AB 2686 offers a tool for this election cycle. And I say this election cycle because I know this won't take effect till 2017. But we are likely to see sort of a domino effect of special elections from the November 2016 outcomes. And this will be available to help our counties with those future burdens. So for the reasons of having an accountable and efficient uh, system in place, we are pleased to support this measure today. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, anybody else in support 
uh, with the Me Too's only? Yes. Yes, yeah, Steve Cruz on behalf of uh, the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors in, in support. Thank, Thank you. you. Paul Smith on behalf of the Rural Counties Association in strong support of the bill. Thank you. Madam Chair, members, Julie Navoris here on behalf of the Urban Counties of California in strong support. Thank you. Any, uh, any other support? Any opposition? Okay. You, you want to do it down there? Okay, fine. Why not? Why not? So Margaret Johnson with Disability Rights in California, and I'm also speaking today on behalf of Asian Americans Advancing Justice. Um, as was expressed by Michael Vu, um, Disability Rights California has some concerns with the bill. Um, I just mentioned a couple of them here. We're concerned about making sure that there are voting accessibility advisory committees set up in the counties that are going to be doing this, and we are also concerned about ensuring there is an accessible ballot for people um, with dis certain types of disabilities to vote by mail. Um, we have been working with the author on that and are hopeful that um, we'll be able to reach resolution on that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Raul Macias, on behalf of ACLU of California, um, we appreciate the, all the work that the author's done on this and, and Michael Vu. We've, we've been doing a lot of work on this. I think um, we share the concerns that Disability Rights California raised. There are also, we, we remain concerned or we want to keep working with the author and making sure that there's, there are protections in place that uh, ensure voters are contacted and, and notified of, of this major change to how they would be, the election is being conducted and that only um, and that the counties that participate are adequate have the infrastructure in place um, to do the outreach that's going to be necessary to let voters know mm -hmm. um, and I would just point out 18 to AB 1873 was mentioned one of the reasons that I think we have these concerns that AB 1873 was was a pilot set up in San Diego County where they they do have a language access advisory committee set up they do have a voter accessibility advisory committee set up they don't have large disparities in vote by mail use between protected classes of voters and other voters. Um, and there was a commitment from, from Michael Vu in San Diego to work with stakeholders on implementing this and making sure that um, they received input on how they were going to contact voters. And so if we're expanding this to other counties, we just want to make sure that those types of protections are in place since this is a, a large expansion. But we look forward to continuing to work with the author. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Anyone, any other opposition? Any questions from the committee? Yes, Mr. Harper. So just to clarify, does this only deal, this only deals with legislative elections, congressional and, uh, and, uh, and, and state legislative. Why, why not include uh, cities, school districts, et cetera? Very honestly, Mr. Vice Chair, I, uh, there was a little bit of a path of least resistance thought process there. Um, I think it's, um, you know, we're asking this committee to an expand, expand an existing pilot. Um, my primary focus has, has been uh, w with regard to specials is that low turnout that we've seen time and time again uh, in legislative vacancies um, in particular, uh, as well as a congressional. So we opted to narrow this uh, to focus it on legislative uh, and congressional. It was, uh, frankly, probably something of a strategic uh, choice on our part, but we did uh, we did consider that option. And a part of what uh, brings that up is, you know, my history in my local area, there's been a concern that me and a lot of other citizens have had uh, in that uh, sometimes you have these local elections where the only three candidates or the three incumbents of so the election gets canceled. So you have a school district that is often not paying for elections because they don't have an election. And then when there's a vacancy, then they just, from amongst the uh, members, just appoint one of their folks. And so we actually had a situation where one of our local districts, the Fountain Valley School District, the entire board was composed of people who had never initially won their seat by an election. They had all initially won their seat by appointment. Mm -hmm. And so the concern that I have on one side is how often our local governments are taking an appointment path instead of a uh, voters decide uh, path to, uh, to to get on the vacancy. But I will concede on the other side, uh, I'm very concerned about the organiza organization of California elections, moving away from ballot voting and going to an entirely vote-by-mail system. Uh, as was 
suggested uh, with one of the initial bills or one of the previous bills uh, forwarded by Member Gonzalez in that if we are going to turn our vote by mail system into something where the harvesting and the hauling of ballots is instead transmitted to political operatives, union stewards, and other highly political people, I'm very concerned about what our elections can turn to if we keep going down this slope of uh, vote by mail ballots in an uncontrolled and highly political handling situation. I appreciate the the concern, um, Mr. Harper. I would just add that the the goal here is um, more of a hybrid kind of approach uh, over the long haul. I think there's an effort to look at all mailed ballots, something along the Colorado model, but ensuring that there are high tech voting centers uh, throughout, um, you know, a county, for example. So there is still the uh, drop off option and still a voting center option if folks have concerns about putting a ballot in the mail. Uh, in the San Mateo County example, uh, that was employed and uh, turnout was up across the board and costs were down. But the key uh, to that success was the publicizing of the change in the election. So there was an effort made to do education and outreach. And just one final note, I'm fully committed to addressing the concerns raised. Um, We have been um, um, engaging with uh, disability rights and and other groups and fully committed to working on those accessibility issues going forward. But thank you for your comments. Any other comments? Is there a motion? Move the bill. Okay, it's been moved and second. I want to thank Mr. Mullen and his supporters for bringing this bill forward. Uh, I uh, truly appreciate the author's desire to creatively improve our turnout and, and lower the cost of special elections. Uh, not only uh, do we see this at the state and the federal level, but uh, all sometimes dismally at uh, school board elections. I think Los Angeles had an election with less than 10 percent of a turnout in a very needy district, which was unfortunate uh, that uh, that that would happen. Um, I am concerned, as I talked about, the, the, the changing of the date, and you've agreed to that, and that's good. I'm, I'm equally concerned, and I, and, and I made this very clear, I think, in, in my conversations, that I, I don't want to support any more pilots be very honest, because we have a tendency to pilot ourselves to death, and we pilot, 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 and then we all of a sudden arrive at a conclusion that we should uh, make a, a, a motion to end the uh, the date in which the pilot exists, so which means it becomes de facto law. In other words, uh, we end up with a, a law that we haven't actually discussed and created. We also sometimes don't get the data back, and I think the purpose of a pilot is to get information about what works, what doesn't work, and how to make it more effective. And so I'm looking forward to the results of these pilots, and I think we have one that's supposed to be coming in this this year uh, from a pilot earlier. So we've had several pilots on voting, vote by mail, how it works, what it doesn't, and we should be at a point where we should have good data to talk about, as some have mentioned, what, what you have to have in order to have a pilot, whether the language issues need to be addressed, whether the accessibility issues need to be addressed, whether it needs to be a longer time or short Shorter time frame, whatever whatever it is, but rather than just continue to have pilots and then we end up doing something without knowing what the result of the pilot was, and so that would then inform us as we move forward to talk about legislation or changing our voting patterns. We know what works, what doesn't work, and what's most effective and ineffective. Uh, I look at a pilot as a time for research. And that's what we're doing, giving these areas an opportunity to research, to bring back the information. So my assumption is that we won't have any more requests for pilots, uh, that we will get some results from the pilots. Uh, and I believe our auth- this author and our past author believes that also, and that hopefully uh, by 2021 we will know exactly what we want to recommend. Uh, if not before, uh, as to what it should look like when we're doing uh, vote by mail and and the effect of it and and whether it's a hybrid system or a single system or whatever. So I'm supportive of this. I think we need to uh, expand it to get the information. But I'm looking forward to the information rather than another pilot or or a or a, or a bill to eliminate the sunset date. Uh, I'm looking forward to a conversation about the results of the pilot. That being said, I'm recommending I'm recommending support for this motion and for this bill. And uh, call the roll, please. The motion is to pass as amended. Weber, aye. Weber, aye. Harper, Harper, no. Travis Allen, yes. Travis Allen, no. Gordon. Gordon, I low, low I Mullen, I oh. Mullen I so Nazarian, 
Nazarian I. We have eyes five, nose two. We actually have a bill that got out and everybody's voted five two. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, look forward to the results. Thank you. I think that concludes all of the bills that are before us today. Um, and uh, we do have a number of bills on call. So we will go back to uh, those that are on call. Item three, AB 2021 by Ridley Thomas. The motion is due pass. The current vote is three to two with the chair voting aye. Gordon. That's the aye. International Observer. Mm -hmm. Gordon, I'm Nazarian. Aye. Nazarian, aye. We have ayes five, noes two. That bill is out, okay. Item 1, AB 1921 by Gonzalez. The motion is due pass. The current vote is 3 to 2 with the chair voting aye. Mullen? Aye. Mullen, aye. Nazarian? Aye. Nazarian, aye. We have ayes 5, noes 2. Okay, that bill is out. Thank you. Item 4, AB 2152 by Gray. The motion is due pass. Um, current vote is 3 to 2. One not voting with the chair voting no. Gordon? No. Gordon, no. Nose three, eyes three. That bill did not pass, okay? Uh, is, okay, then we have a number of bills. Uh, we'll go back and allow folks to add on. If you have not voted on a bill, we'll start. Okay. On consent, Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Nazarian? Aye. Nazarian, aye. Um, mm -hmm. Item 9, SB 254, um, by oh. Senators Allen and Leno. The motion is due pass to appropriations. Um, Nazarian? What's the vote count? What's the vote count? It's, it's passed. It's currently 4 to 2. Aye. Nazarian, aye. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we're finished. Everything. Okay. That, uh, we're adjourned? That, that, I'm not sure. What would what, what, you do? I didn't remember which one is six? Thurman withdrew his bill. On item one, Mr. Allen, you voted no. Okay, so I'm on all the. Uh, yes, we're adjourned. <laughs>